I'm Marty Hott. I manage the communications for United Cooperative Services. We serve parts of 14 counties from <laughs> cities from Mansfield to Meridian to Stephenville to Cleveland, but what we're focused on now and what we will be focused on for the foreseeable future is Palo Pinto County, Possible Kingdom Lake area, and getting the power back on. That'll be our primary focus. Now throughout that process, we will be communicating to you on a continuous basis. That's an objective for United, not just in a disaster situation, but also on a, just a continuous uh, priority for, for the co-op. That's what co-ops are about. What our, what our plan is today is to provide you with uh, where we're at today, talk a little bit about our plan for, for getting the power back on, and also what you can be prepared for over the next days, weeks, and possibly months. Now with us, we have a number of United uh, staff, and they'll also be able to answer some questions. We will stay here as long as you want and give you the answers as best we can, we can under these circumstances and what we know today. Before I do that, I'd like to extend some gratitude from the co-op to our folks here at the chamber, to Lisa and all these folks back here who have been cooking for the firefighters, and they've recently switched gears and have been supporting our crews who have been out there pretty hardcore for the last 48 hours to help serve you. So I'd like to thank them. I want to thank Mark Engerbritson and the Lake Country Sun for providing us a communications vehicle to get information out to you. I know you've been frustrated, as we've been frustrated, about information, misinformation, et cetera, but this has been a moving target for them. It's been a moving target for us on what's open, what's accessible. And again, I want to thank the Chamber for giving us this venue on such short notice. And, and one final uh, thanks I'd like to extend, as far as communications goes, is to the Pondera PK website. Uh, they've been instrumental also in getting our information out quickly and effectively. So thanks to them as well. <laughs> At this time, you know, I know you guys want answers, and, and hopefully we'll provide the answers. I know they're not always going to be what exactly you want to hear, but it's going to be factual. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Ray Beavers, our CEO. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I first of all I'd like to say on behalf of all the members of United and probably any, any person who has, know, has known what's going on, to those of you who've lost property, uh, those of you who uh, have experienced the devastation of something like that, uh, our, our heartfelt condolences go out to you for that because I know there's nothing like that. And uh, also at the same time we want to say a special thank you to all of the individuals who worked so hard to prevent this death disaster being really worse than what it, what it really is. And, and that's all the, the hardworking firefighters and everybody that supported the firefighters and their efforts. It's just awesome the job they do, putting their lives on the line for that. And also don't want to forget the, the two people that lost their lives in fighting these fires, those, those who have been injured. Our prayers and our condolences go out to them and their families. Uh, we're talking about property here, folks, and we're talking about convenience of having electricity back to our properties. You know, that's kind of minor when you look at the scope of everything. But it's still a very major problem, major issue. I know you want to know about it. What happens, right, what, this disaster has done several things. It's really changed the lives of a lot of people, and it's, it's, it's hurt our economy in this area as well. So that is what we're focused on at United. First of all, let me tell you about a cooperative. If you've never been a part of a cooperative, we have nothing but your best interest in mind. And that is taking care of you in a very safe way, in a very productive way. And, uh, and I, I want to tell you too, we have some of the most trained individuals that uh, they're trained uh, from the time they step into the doors until they get this opportunity. And this is what they live for being able to use this training to, to, to help the folks out in the area. Now, I also want to tell you one other thing. We're going to have a lot of people here. Just get ready. Come Monday or Tuesday, we're going to have people from probably seven, eight, maybe nine cooperatives 
in the surrounding area. You're going to see trucks. You're going to see uh, wire pullers. You're going to see it, it, us almost rebuilding our entire system. Now let's talk about what we're dealing with right now. We have about 180 miles of line that's been affected. It's taken us about 50 to 60 years to put the infrastructure in. And of course, we're going to do our best to get it back in the shape that's going to be safe for you and, and something that can, uh, we can rely on from, that, from this point forward. Uh, we're not going to just come in and temporary anything because that's, that's not the right way to do it. I wish we could, but we can't. Now think of this 180 miles as a series of extension cords put together. And you, you start at the substation, and you've got all of these extension cords stuck together. It may be just fine for the substation, maybe for, for 20 miles, then you have a mile of devastation. Well, that's a total disconnect from the people on down farther from where the, you could say, extension cord has been unplugged. So we're going to have to focus on our, what we'll have to do is focus on each extension cord. We call that our backbone. That's our feeder line. We're going to have to focus totally on that as we go. In the process, as we're working through that, if your house is located on here and we can make a connection, we will be doing that at that time. Uh, then as we get further down the line and are able to get the, all of the extension cords put to get back together at the end of the line, and that's where we'll focus finally getting everybody back on. Now, kind of put things in perspective. <clears throat> This area around Hogs, Hog Bend right here, you have real devastation right along. Several houses have been lost right along that area. Our line, our line that comes through in that area comes through a pasture, more or less, that's going to be very difficult to get to. And we're talking about solid rock. Uh, I think one of our guys was telling me he had spent one day setting one pole, two days setting one pole in, in solid rock. But what we're going to be doing, we're going to be sending several crews right in there. We're going to be rebuilding the infrastructure. All the houses, there's several houses here that are destroyed, but we have several houses that are still there. That's going to be very, that's going to be one of our most difficult areas. I'm starting off right there. That's going to be one of our, our most difficult areas to get ever, all the power back on right there. Sportsman World, that's another situation that we, we've lost some of our main feeder lines that are coming in from this direction right here and back in that, that area right there, that uh, we're gonna spend it quite a bit, that's gonna take a quite a bit of effort. There's a lot of homes in that area have been lost, but still there's a lot of homes still standing. But uh, we feel like these two areas here are gonna be the hardest hit, and it's gonna take us more time to get those areas on. Now as far as, uh, Let's see, the other area was Gaines Bend. That is quite a bit of damage is done there. We feel like we can expedite that probably a little sooner than we can these other two areas. I'll get in time frames in just a second because I know that's what everybody wants to know. Now as far as the rest of our service territory, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Uh, no major problems in that area. Hills over PK. Uh, our guys, we've had guys out there now checking the underground system there from the heat seeing how much problems going to be uh, dealing with there. We think maybe a good chance that's going to be on this evening or maybe tomorrow. So we're, our guys are really focused on there trying to get that done. Now, <clears throat> presently we have about a thousand people without power. Uh, we have about uh, close to what we thought at one time was going to be close to 2,000 poles that were destroyed in this fire. And we were just estimating, our engineers were estimate that from the amount of damage that was going on within some of the areas. But the fires went so fast that a lot of the damage we were expecting did not occur on these big creosote poles. So therefore, our estimate now, instead of about 2,000, is about 500. So that really changes the game plan a whole heck of a lot. Yesterday, I would have told you maybe month, six weeks. Now, our, our whole goal is to have everybody, everybody we can have on, everybody still has property before Memorial Day. So that's the big rush for PK Lake and the economy here.